Oh, what's going on here then? Well, I'm giving it a service to get it back on the road. Giving it a service? Yeah. Well, you'll be doing that on the Project Man channel. I'm going to be changing the oil, the oil filter, the air filter, and also the pollen filter in my ST220 since the mice infestation. Now, that's why I want to change the pollen filter. Get inside. I need a good valet inside, folks. Let's get it started up. Oh, I love it. That's the noise you want. Midlife crisis. I'll just move it over a bit, folks, so we can move that out. Let's let him move that other one over a bit. Look at that, you can't even hear this one. That's the two litre, folks, that we fixed. The scrapyard Mondeo that uh, several garages couldn't fix, and we did it. Happy days. Right, let's move mine back a bit, and then we can uh, do our little bits on this. Right, so we'll leave him getting on with his video. This is going to be my little video, folks. So let's get this bonnet up in the air. Okay, let's see what we got here. Right, folks, so that's where our air filter lives. I'm not too sure exactly at the moment where the pollen filter lives. It may be under the scuttle here. Normally they've got a split scuttle, wouldn't they, if, if they uh, come out. So it could be a few screws here and then flap that back. I would say that's where it is there. So we'll take that off first, and I'm hoping uh, that it's under there. But first of all, what I've got to do is to jack the car up. I've got to take the under tray off because we're going to be dropping the oil out. So I'll put you on a little bit of time lapse for that. I'll get it up in the air and then we'll get that tray off. Okay, folks, the longest part of that job was getting that bloody tray off. What a pain in the backside. Anyway, oh, it's not a 15 mil, I thought it was a 15 mil. <laughs> was that 15 mil I got in my head? Oh, I picked up a bloody 14 mil and I, hold on, wait, wait there. Oh, well, got the right one this time. And let's make sure we're undoing it, yep. So it lives right at the back here. It's a 15 mil. And now, hopefully, I can undo this without any hassle. Oh, bear with me, folks. Uh, oh, never easy, is it? Need a longer lever than that, folks. I might be able to tap it with the hammer. Oh, I shouldn't really tap a ratchet with a hammer, but there you go. Do what you need to do. We got it. Needs must, folks. Needs must. Right, the engine's tipped back because we've got it on the axle stand, as I said to you. So, um, hopefully, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's get that tray around now. 
just about everything's in the way, folks. Let's just get that tray out of it. Catchment tray there. And hopefully, I'll get this in the right place without dripping it everywhere. And yes, folks, I should have gloves on. There we go. That'd be those. Lucky enough, it ain't a windy day. And uh, that's lovely and clean, that, folks. I don't think it's. Oh, where are we? Can you see that? That's lovely and clean. Look, no metal filings on there at all. So we'll let that drain out. And then we'll put the drain plug back in after a good clean up around it. And uh, then we can top the oil up. This subframe's looking a bit uh, crusty though, I must say. So I will take this off, give it a wire brush down and give it a good hammer right as well. So uh, that's another little project I've got to do. Nothing worse, folks, than on a windy day when you're doing this. And the wind, when it gets thinner, the streak of oil, the wind blows it all over the place. So you don't want to be doing that on your drive without putting any paper down or card down or something beforehand if it's a windy day. Right, folks. We've got the uh, plug back in now. So the air, the oil filter lives just here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, I've got one of these um, chain wrenches that just slides over the filter. And then you just sort of wind them in the correct direction to undo it. All right, let's wind it out first. It's a bit awkward to show you this, folks. Right, and they sort of bite into the filter itself. Let's put my glasses on, hold on. And hopefully, with a half a turn, it can undo it, which it just has done. But this can be a messy bit, this one, folks, because uh, these filters are upside down and they're normally full of fluid so you want your catch tray underneath it as well under there if I can get grab hold of it as I wind this off you see it's gonna uh, leak blink oil everywhere and that's the only thing with these designs they're bloody full up with oil and it drips all over your blinking exhaust there we go see it coming out now look I've missed it look there we go just keep it there till, till it drains out that's always the problem with these these type of filters. So we'll just let a drop drip out first. And don't forget to wipe your exhaust down afterwards because it will smoke like a demon afterwards. So we just wind it off slowly but surely. And I've got a cloth on the floor as well, folks, so I know not all of it's going to go in that container. There we go. All right, see it all come out. Look, lucky enough, it is going in the container, so I'm happy with that. We'll just let it run in there for a bit before I change my hand position and just drop it down and then tip the rest of it in the container there we go and that's the oil filter out so I've got some spare rag here folks so just wrap it up in a bit of spare rag or we'll put it in the box and keep it up that way as you can see right that's the old one out so we will wipe all this down as well folks and uh, I will get a wax and grease remover on there or some carb cleaner or something and just give that a good wipe down. I'm just wiping down the mating surface on the ring up on the top. Right, so I've got the new air filter or oil filter here, sorry. And uh, one thing you want to do before you uh, get it all dirty is make sure it's exactly the same as the old one, which I've already checked uh, this one is. And just get a bit of the old oil and just rub it around the rubber seal just so the rubber seal doesn't chafe when you put it back in so that's that and then get it in position and spin it on and while we're spinning this on we don't need to over tighten this you can just generally do it hand tight but with a good firm grip you don't need any mechanical tools to tighten these on a good firm grip Oh, there we go. And if you want to just make sure 
If your hands are too slippery, just hold it with a cloth. And, or a rubber glove even. There we go, and I'm happy with that. So that's nice and tight, or hand tight. And I've got some old uh, carb cleaner here, folks. Just to sort of, just clean up this area here. Just gets rid of that oil. It will probably smoke anyway, but uh, it just tidies it up a bit, you know. Get on top of it. Give it a good wipe down. As I say, it will burn off, but it just makes the job a little bit better, for, easier for you. And there we are. A nice new oil filter. Up there, I can see it. Installed. Happy days. Right, well, while I'm under here, folks, I think I'm going to take the time just to do, put a bit of hammer right on this uh, subframe, just to give it a bit of protection. So I'm going to do this now, and I'll see you in a minute. I won't fit the under tray yet because I'm waiting for that uh, paint to go off. Obviously, it's hammer right. It was wire brushed down first of all and coated up. It shouldn't take too long to dry, and then I'll put the under tray up. But uh, what I thought I'd do now is just to change this pollen filter, which I do believe lives under here. So we'll just undo these Torx bits here, and that should reveal a trap door, hopefully. And I don't know whether we're going to see anything where the uh, mice got in at all under here. I'm not sure. So. Uh, We'll have to play that one by ear. I think it's only three of these you have to undo. Two. The third one, just under the edge there. There we go. This should flip open now, I think. Oh, I can see the pollen filter and it's blocked up and I can see a little gap there. Hold on. Let's pull that out of there, look. Let's put these screws over this side. Right, okay. So there is a little way in there. Let's just put that there for a minute, look. There we go. So as you can see, that's where the blighter looks like he's been getting in. See these little nuts there, look, little seed pods and stuff. You see a little gap there, look. That's where I think it's been getting in. That's probably due to some uh, person not fitting the pollen filter correctly in the first place. So I think we found our point of entry, folks. So let's get this whole filter out. Just lean it forward. Eh? Hey? Yeah, found the point of entry. What's that? Through the uh, mice. See the seed pods down there, look. Oh, yeah. And also down the edge there, look, they've not fitted the pollen filter properly and they've got in the car that way. So all we've got to do is just lean that forward, look. Yeah, like that. Lift that out. And uh, as you can see, it does need changing, folks. It's pretty dirty. All the way up there, I can see in the uh, creases there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, thick with it. Thick, absolutely thick with it. Right, get rid of that. And there's our fan motor there. And believe it or not, mice can get in these sort of holes like this and get through that. So um, I'm going to give all this a hoover out, folks, now, and then we'll refit that pollen filter. Right.
I think that's about the best we're going to get it, folks. Happy days. Right, so here's our new air filter. Hopefully the right size. And it's normally got a directional airflow. Airflow goes in that way, so if we put that down there like that. Right, okay, there we go. That's got that in now, so. So I can lower this down now. Bolt this all back into place, like that. And uh, call that one done. Let's just undo these screws here. These are just normal Phillips screws. Right, looks like there's only three screws there, and that should tip back maybe. Filter don't look too bad actually, folks. Look, but I will change it. There you go. There's a bit of crap in there, but not too much. Thank you. And just make sure that you've got the right filter before you change it, folks. As you can see, it's exactly the same. So we'll just plonk that one straight back in there. The box is em uh, full of... If the box was full of leaves, I'd hoover that out, but that one's actually fine, so I'm happy with that. Make sure it sits in there correctly. Oh, that's a bit of a pain to get in, folks. But we're there. Make sure it's all in. Right, that's it. That's it, all done now. Apart from the oil, so I'm gonna fill it up with oil now. And that should be the last thing, apart from putting the under tray back on. Right, so we wanna change the engine oil now. So the engine oil filler cap is here. So if we remove that. Cool, which is easier said than done. Not the easiest thing to get to. And also, you always want to check that there's no sign of any milkiness or whatever in there. Right, so we've got ourselves a funnel. And we've got ourselves some oil. I'm using 5W30 for this engine, and it takes 5.7 litres. There's four and a half litres in here, so we'll put all this in first. Right, so that's four and a half litres in there at the moment. Now the car's still up in the air, so it's not on level ground. Right, so I'm just gonna put another litre in there to take it up to five and a half. All right, there we go, I'll leave it for that at the moment. It's about five and a half in there now, litres. So before we go any further, I will just have a look underneath, see if we've got any leaks. Right, so just put that cap on for the moment. And I will just check the dipstick. I know it's... Uh, not going to give a true reading, but I just want to make sure it is on the dipstick first of all, before I start the car up. Yeah, which it is. It's in between the two dots there. There's two dots there, the lower and the higher mark. So it's right in the middle of there. So that probably will drop a bit more and I will have to probably put a bit more in. But at least I know I can start the car up and just basically see if we've got any leaks coming from the, the drain plug and also where the oil filter is, just to make sure it's okay before I put that bottom tray on. Make sure your oil light goes out as well. So we'll just let that tick over for a minute. I'm going to have a look underneath and see if we've got any drips of oil. If not, we can put that under tray back up now. No sign of any leaks there, folks. So I'll turn it off, put the under tray back up, drop the car down onto a level peg in, and then we'll check the oil and top it up as necessary. Right, so there's no leaks there, folks. So what I'll do now is I'll put the under tray back up I'll uh, drop it on the level ground and then we'll check the dipstick and the oil level again and top up as required. So I'm going to do that now. See you in a minute. Right, 
folks, back on level ground. Let's check the oil level now. I think it will probably need some more in it. Let's wipe that old dipstick. Yeah, we're on the bottom mark there, as you can see, look. So I'm gonna put another liter in, I suppose that should cover it. As I say, 5.7 liters apparently. Superb. There we go, folks, just where we need to be, right on the top there. Happy days. So there we go, not a full service there. I didn't change the uh, plugs on this occasion simply because I've only probably done about five to 6,000 miles on this car since the plugs were last changed. The owner had it before me done the plugs and uh, there's no need to really change them every 5,000 miles. So they can probably wait to another couple of services, I would imagine. There's no sign of any misfire or anything, so the um, car's running lovely. I will just check the fluids. I'll check the brake fluids and also the power steering fluid and uh, the washer bottles as well, all that sort of stuff. So that's for me to do, not for you to watch. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tinkering about video. Hope you've enjoyed this, see you next video. And until then, bye for now. <laughs>